Sometimes we can be so stuck in our own heads that we think, well, this is the this is the way it is. This is the way things work. But when you open up your challenge to four or five other smart people, it's amazing how they will see things that we have blinders on. We just can't see it, but they're going to see those opportunities. So one of the things I often recommend is to have what's called an MMB session, a make me better session. So imagine, Sven, if you either virtually these days or if you found an environment where you could do it in person, you invite seven people over to your house or to your place or virtually who are like super creative thinkers, have really diverse backgrounds. And you ask each of those seven to invite one other person who you don't even know. And by the way, if it's in person, like provide the meal, provide the beverages, all the rest, like create a cool experience and a fun experience. And then you say, listen, I'm so psyched that you all joined this experience. I wanna tell you about my personal dreams, my personal big five for life. Here's what they are. Here's the obstacle that I see in front of me. What ideas do you have? And what is so insane about this technique is that when you get those kind of super smart people with diverse backgrounds together, they're going to hear your obstacle and be like, well, Sven, you could do this. And then the person three seats over is like, yeah. And if you did that, you could do this. And then the guy in the back can be like, well, and if you did those two things, you could do this. And it's like your obstacles will be shot to pieces within seconds using this technique. And you will accelerate your progress no matter what your dream is, no matter what the obstacles were by a hundred percent, much more rapidity than if you were to try and figure it all out on your own. This is a cannot miss technique. As a serial entrepreneur, I'm always trying to evolve. Having great conversations with other high performers is one of the best ways to grow, not only in business, but also in spirit, health, and relationships. This is Svencast. Listen, grow, repeat. What I still find challenging, especially if you say, for example, Big Five for Life, is sometimes, like my biggest challenge is that sometimes my goals seem to be conflicting a bit especially regarding my time. Like, for example, mm. um, I would like to be like very spiritually enlightened. This is something I would like to be. takes a lot of time. I would like to be very athletic and very sporty, maybe even, you know, doing some kind of, let's say, mini competitions. For example, in martial arts, it takes yeah. a lot of time. Uh, yeah, if you do martial arts training, you have to train technique, endurance, sparring, et cetera, et cetera. So you have like all these groups of trainings you need like you cannot you, you cannot just train technique without endurance you cannot train endure etc etc like the, like it goes on and on so my conflict is like the time and I, but but i also want to uh um, be you know the guy who's creating a billion dollar company and i'm doing that right now so so I, i quite often i run into those conflicts where like my big five are like constantly Flashing, I still have to kind of prioritize and decide, but it feels terrible. Like a lot of times, how what what do you make of that? I would say two things. So this goes back a little bit to the who concept. I would look at people who have built billion dollar companies mm -hmm. and find ones who are also competitive athletes. My guess is there are definitely examples out there, mm. and learn their story. What did they do? Did they just have a particular? management team that supported them, that enabled them to be the super great creative at the top who is coming up with the ideas and then implementation partners for everything else? Uh, did they um, have a, a scheduling methodology that worked particularly well? Uh. So first thing in the morning, they got in their workout and they got in their competitive training and they scheduled on their calendar ahead of time that I'm going to do four competitions every six months. And therefore, they treated those with absolute sanctity. And then everything else came after that. Like My guess is there is a process that these people have figured out, which has proven to be successful. And if you can find four or five examples of this, maybe example number one doesn't fit with your lifestyle or your personality, but somewhere in that spectrum, somebody has figured this out. And this, this is the creative part to me also, that sometimes we can be so, so stuck in our own heads that we think, well, this is, the, this is the way it is. This is the way things work. But when you open up your challenge to four or five other smart people, it's amazing how they will see things that we, we have blinders on. We just can't see it, but they're going to see those opportunities. So one of the things I often recommend is to have what's called an MMB session, a make me better session. Mm -hmm. And you take these things like that's a great example of what you just gave. And I love that because it's very, very real and very tangible. And so imagine, Sven, If you either virtually these days or if you found an environment where you could do it in person, you invite seven people over to your house or to your place or virtually who are like super creative thinkers, have really diverse backgrounds. 
And you ask each of those seven to invite one other person who you don't even know. Mm-hmm. And then you get on the call or in person. And by the way, if it's in person, like provide the meal, provide the beverages, all the rest, like create sure. a cool experience and a fun experience. And then you say, listen, I'm so psyched that you all joined this experience. I want to tell you about my personal dreams, my personal big five for life. Here's what they are. Here's the obstacle that I see in front of me. What ideas do you have? And what is so insane about this technique is that when you get those kind of super smart people with diverse backgrounds together, they're going to hear your obstacle and be like, well, Sven, you could do this. And then the person three seats over is like, yeah. And if you did that, you could do this. And then the guy in the back can be like, well, and if you did those two things, you could do this. And it's like your obstacles will be shot to pieces within seconds using this technique. And you will accelerate your progress no matter what your dream is, no matter what the obstacles were, by 100% uh, much more rapidity than if you were to try and figure it all out on your own. This is a cannot miss technique. Yeah, th- I mean, yeah, that that sounds really great. And it's it's also like the NLP approach and the masterminding approach. Like, And it also, and I would even go further in that case and say, hey, uh, really check what people you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. Because you know, like you can you can have that that kind of experience on a smaller level uh, quite more often if you have like if you hang out with the right people basically. And this is what they say also about net worth and et cetera, et cetera. So if you if you want to be athletic, hang out with athletic people, for example. Well, and in this cool. case, I would say so. I 100 percent believe that's true. And I would say one of the challenges of being um, an entrepreneur, and especially an entrepreneur who's leading the company, is that everyone expects the leader to have all the answers. And so it's more challenging to have that open dialogue because many leaders are looking to be that solid rock foundation that, hey, everything's yeah. going to be okay. We'll figure this out. And yet when they close the door, they're like, dang, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and, and so having other people who are at that same level is fantastic to be able to talk to. And then I would say in this example of the MMB, I've found it to be invaluable to have people from a wide variety of backgrounds. So if it's something athletic, yeah, have a couple other athletes there who can give you that perspective, but then have people who look at the world through a radically different lens, a totally mm-hmm. different lens, uh, because they're going to provide a perspective that you just aren't going to get elsewhere. Yeah, I, I f- that's totally true. And, and uh, for example, my company, GC24, like we have all these people from all these various backgrounds. And when we hire people, like usually I don't even... I don't even read what their education is. I'm just about like, can they solve a problem? Like the problem that's at hand, do they, do they, um, do they, are they hands on and are they great talkers or great doers? Um, yeah, it's, it's really, and, and uh, like, for example, I, I'm, I have a medical background. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. a dentist. So, And it's really good to have like a dentist's perspective on business. Yeah. <laughs> <Even> like, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, think about that. The lens through which you look at the world because of that training gives you such a unique perspective. You know, yeah. imagine yeah. if you had someone who is a professional musician, someone who is a professional fisherman, someone who is a professional yeah. athlete, yeah. Um, someone who is a stay at home parent. We all, you're going to get so many different lenses on a particular problem that you're going to get. And you're a creative guy. Uh, and so, Add in all those those creative inputs to your own creativity. Imagine what's going to pop out of that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, companies like big tech companies do that. Like we do it as well. That we like to when we have like, for example, a, a team or a management team. We like to have them from all kinds of backgrounds to exactly yeah. have this effect of different perspectives, which is uh, which is very important. Um, you mentioned uh, not too long ago. You, you talked a lot about dopamine, and so I, I'm I'm also thinking a lot about uh, let's say dopamine optimization. And like one way I am trying to do it is like I I try to minimize my stimuluses. Mm-hmm. So I you know I I try to like during the day not. To look at Instagram too much, I try to, uh, yeah, I, I try to not like, like have to have too many dopamine impulses in order mm, to short, still quick pick ones, yeah, yeah, in order to still be able to feel that when I'm doing boring work, so quote boring work like reading <laughs> something 
like reading contracts or something like right. that. Um, what's your take on that? What What do you do around that? Because you seem to it be very It actually reminds aware. me of something that I have been teaching my daughter since she was a little kid and something that I am constantly reminding myself of, which is an expression that uh, it's very important that I don't let the small stuff keep me from the big stuff. Mm. And so the small stuff is the the mundane, boring things. Uh, and the big stuff is the payoff, whatever the payoff is. Mm -hmm. And I remember using this, we were going to go to Africa and she loves animals. She was only four and a half at the time. And we had to get shots. You know, you got to go get the yellow fever and, and a whole litany of shots to get ready to go to Africa. And so she was kind of scared and kind of nervous. And uh, I said, boo, I said, you know, this is a classic example of don't let the small things keep you from the big things. I said, I'm not happy about getting the shot either. I don't like to get shots either. But if we get the, the yellow fever shot and we know that we're going to be safe when we go to Africa, then we get to go see the animals. And wouldn't it be cool to see an elephant and a lion? And so this idea that, yeah, sometimes in life, you got to go through the, the, the painful small steps to get to the big payoff is one of the great life lessons. Uh, this applies whether you're learning to play guitar, create a great company, um, become an amazing athlete. To me, that's just part of the process. And if we allow ourselves to constantly be distracted by the short little dopamine fixes like the Instagram fix, as you're talking about, you never sort of get to the big payoff. You're just, you're just in that, little, that low level energy zone. Yeah. The thing is like the world is right now, especially this, the tech world is created in a way that, that gives you a lot of little dopamine shots along the way yeah. during the day. And the problem is that you get desensitized by that and your motivation goes down, your ability to, to concentrate goes down and all, all that, all that thing. So I, I have to, I have to personally make an effort to not fall for that mm -hmm. and to not I don't, you know, like to, yeah, to still be able to feel something, to still be, I, I need sensual deprivation in order to be able to, to still feel something for the little things. So I can eventually get to the big thing. Yeah. And so, so I think everyone's got their definition of what would work for the sensory deprivation part. To me, it's being in nature. Uh, yeah. a walk on the ocean side. I love tide pools. I don't know why, but ever since I was a little kid, like to, to see the tide pools and all the crustaceans and little crabs and the fish and the rest of that, yeah. I find myself incredibly calmed and inspired and creative when I'm in that type of environment. Um, whether that's a walk in the woods for someone, whether that's walk along the ocean, whether that's being in the water, physically swimming in the water with a, a snorkel mask on, everyone knows what really does it for them. I think when I hear you say that, I think about my own life. To me, the key is to make sure that I have scheduled and honored that time. Yeah. Because then I know what that feels like. And the short little dopamine fix doesn't even compare. Yes. Yes. That, that, that makes sense to like have, find an activity where you, um, where you are not like, getting that little dopamine shot just from one little thing, but from, from something that you're surrounded with like family yeah. or nature or, and you spend a longer time with. This yeah. Is, a level, like, a level nine or 10 experience that lasts for an hour yes. is going to make those little level six and seven experiences that last for a microsecond seem completely inconsequential. And that, that to me is part of what enables us to break that chain. Because when we have the level nine, 10 experience, we're like, wow, that was awesome. And I'm willing to, to work hard to get that again, whether that's you're in a competition as an athlete and you get to play for the championship and you know how much time went into training for that. Uh, but because you've experienced it, you're like, no, the training's worth it. Um, whether it's writing a great piece of code and then there's the payoff of here you have this incredible software, or in my case, writing a book, uh, the process of writing is it's long and it's arduous as much as I love what I do. But to read a particular line, Sven, that brings out an emotion in me, and I know that it's going to bring out an emotion in the reader, the payoff on that, oh, that's a level a thousand on a scale of one to 10. Great. Um, like as a final, let's say as a final tip, uh, there's a lot of people 
especially in the audience who would love to write their first book. What yeah. would your, your biggest tip or advice for them in order to get that done? I would, gosh, there are so many tips that I would give. We could do a whole podcast on that alone because I've learned, I've learned so much over the course of the years, including a, a lot by failure. Uh, but let me think if I can give you just one or two that are absolute. Well, yeah. the first one is something we talked about a little bit before, but I'll expound upon it. And that is uh, write first, edit second. Mm -hmm. um, so allow your thoughts to flow and then go back and see how structured you need to make them. But, you know, write first, uh, edit second. And the second thing I guess would be if I've always, I've always felt that if I make myself laugh, but when I, if I write something and it makes me laugh, it's going to make somebody else laugh. If it makes me cry, mm -hmm. it'll probably make someone else cry. And so by writing to one person and making sure the content connects, then you just need to find another, you know, 250,000 people that are sort of like that one person. And that's going to happen from word of mouth. That's going to happen from you out there doing press and media. That's going to happen from just creating a great product or service in the, in this case, the book. Um, but write something that you're super proud of that connects to you on a deep level And it's probably going to have that same sort of impact with other people as well. Thank you. And as a final question, like if you want to create the best seller, do you have yeah. any different approach, like for creating, like when you when it comes to best sellers as opposed to let's say uh, just a book that you want to write? Is there any difference, or is it just like identical, everything identical for you? Well, so I'll tell you one practice that I use is when I finish a book, when I feel, and, and I'm very, very methodical in terms of the editing process, like I said. So once I've written it, then I go back there and I start the editing process and I will probably edit a book between 20 and 50 times uh, going through and making sure I like every single word, every single page. And then when I feel it's there, I will ask 10 people who I really trust to give me what I call very critical feedback. I don't want to hear just, oh, I loved it. What I want to hear is, you know what? That story on page 72, like that brought me to tears. Um, that, that part on page 96, that felt a little redundant to me. Like I think you covered that earlier. I want someone who's going to be super honest, super critical. And that's not easy for us to take. We want to hear just, oh, it's great, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, allowing ourselves to listen to that critical feedback and then challenging ourselves to make it even better by implementing that feedback is what takes it from a B or a B plus to an A plus plus. And I will say that if, if you give it to 10 people and whether this is a book or something else, if one person tells you something, that's an opinion. But if three or four of the 10 tell you something similar about page 96, you better listen because it means that when it goes out to the bigger, broader world, 40% of the people are probably going to be having that same reaction mm -hmm. and you'd have, you've missed the mark in some way, shape or form. So I always try and think from the reader perspective, how can I create something that is incredible for the reader? Part of that is me and what I'm, I'm channeling and what I'm writing. And part of that is the willingness to sit in the hot seat with my focus group mm -hmm. and not only listen to what they have to say, but then with the deep sigh, go back to the manuscript and say, okay, how do I make it better? You know? So John, uh, if people want to get in contact with you or learn more about you, uh, how can they find you and reach you? Uh, yeah, the best spot is my website, which is my name. So johnstrelecki.com. And I'm uh, regularly now creating thoughts, ideas into articles and making it available on that website. So that would be a good spot to do it. And then via social media as well, uh, at John Strelecki on all the social media platforms. We do our best to post really inspirational thought, thought-provoking stuff to uh, help people live an extraordinary life. And my great wish, in addition to that, is uh, my plan is, assuming that the world has returned to a degree of normalcy, um, I'm planning on coming back in May as well as October of 2022 to Germany, Switzerland, and Austria um, to do media tours around the fourth cafe book, which is coming out in May of 2022. And so I would love to have the chance to interact with fans again. It's been a year now. And uh, so I really hope that uh, things will normalize and I can be there and have a chance to interact with everybody. That would be awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. That was so helpful. I really enjoyed the talk. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, no, I look forward to doing it again. And uh, thanks for all that you're doing out there. I know that you're helping so many different entrepreneurs and Uh, folks who have big dreams bring those big big dreams to life. And that's a great gift that you're doing. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And 
yeah, thanks to you as well for yeah, all your all your inspiration and your wisdom. You know, it changes million million people's lives, and that's that's the best thing you can do. I think that would be one of my big five for life. Like help as many people as I, as I can. Right. Love that. Love that. All right, I'm here for you. Let me know if I can be of assistance. Okay. Thank you. See you next time. Right. Bye bye. Thanks, man. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode of Svencast again.